Hello, friends. I'm so delighted to be with you. It has been a long time since my brother in law, Gary Renard, and I actually had this type of discussion. Uh, we're talking all the time as family, vacationing, <laughs> doing things. And it occurred to me, I said, you know what? Let's do a podcast. Let's do, you know, another discussion. So you think I'd think about it more, or we'd think about it more. But anyway, so. Gary, great to have you here. Uh, Jackie, it's so good to be uh, doing this with you. You know, we see each other all the time. People don't realize, you know, some people don't even know that you're my uh, sister-in-law, <laughs> that I'm your brother-in-law. And, uh, you know, we see each other all the time. And then all of a sudden on Thanksgiving, uh, Jackie said, Gary, I'm like, why don't we do something together? It's been ages. <laughs> And so we said, yeah, yeah, probably in the next week or two. Of course, that didn't happen. And we, uh, we ended up going to Hawaii together. Uh, not just the two of us, by the way. Uh, Mark came too. Yeah. And uh, Cindy also came. But uh, we, you know, we had a great time in, in Hawaii. But then finally now, and I got a cold on the way home with this freezing cold airplane. Uh, but I didn't sue because it's not my style. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it's been a while. So... Now we're both ready, and uh, I, I got my hair cut and everything. <laughs> Looking it's, good. Yeah, that's well, right. it's much too short, but you know the thing is, it grows so fast that it, it it just has to be cut short, or else you know in two weeks I'll need another one. So uh, anyway, we're finally together. We're going to talk about a course in miracles. You know, people always ask me, like even when I do a workshop, uh, people will ask me who's running. They'll say, "What are you going to talk about?" I say, uh, of course, the miracles, <laughs> <laughs> because they want a specific, you know, yeah. thing, name for the workshop and and sure. what you're going to focus on. And I tell them, look, I talk about a course of miracles. Uh, I don't really plan ahead of time, even though I will give a a title if they insist. Uh, I don't really plan ahead of time because uh, right from the beginning, I was captivated by that part of the course. It says, I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do. And because he who sent me will direct me. You know, so uh, I took that to heart. My very first workshop, even though I was uh, terrified and I thought that I was going to freeze up and not have anything to say. So I made all these notes. You know, I, I had these index cards. Right. And I had all these notes. I had practically the whole workshop laid out. <laughs> on these index cards because I was so afraid I was going to freeze up and I was terrified and uh, I didn't know what to do. And I got out there and uh, I remembered that part from A Course in Miracles where it says, I am here only to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me and so on. I do not have to worry, as I said, about what to say or what to do because he who sent me uh, will direct me and when I said those words in that first workshop, it was a life changer because I felt For different. Sure. For sure. You know, I felt, oh, wait a minute here. Uh, I don't have to worry about what to say or what to do. And I kind of like got in touch with the Holy Spirit in my mind and the Holy Spirit started to do the workshop. And I, I just felt free. And afterwards I thought, wow, what freedom if I didn't have to worry about what to say, what if I could just walk out there and do it and not have to be concerned or, or worried about anything? And it, that's pretty much the way it's been the last uh, 20 years. 20 and, years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm still doing it, though, not as much. Uh, I'm not quite as young as I used to be. I'm yep, not, you're uh, looking good, but you're, you're, you're slowing down as you deserve to, meaning not slowing down in a bad way, but you've been out there for so long. I don't know if people really realize, I know a lot of people do, but all the states, you know, all the cities, overseas, all the yeah. travel, you know, it's a lot. 30 countries. Oh my God. I it's know. like uh, a lot. And I, I've only booked a couple of live things for this year so far. There's a lot online, but just a couple of things live. But once right. Uh, right. I know what the release date of the next book will be, then I'll book a few live workshops. For sure. Uh, around the country, maybe a couple in Europe, uh, Australia, places like that. But um, for now, I'm doing mostly online work, 
couple of things live, like Chicago in August, which I do every two years, whether Infinity. I have it booked out or not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things like that. But once I know the release date, I'll book a few more. But then after that, I'm just going to play by ear, you know, see how it goes. Awesome. Uh, but five books is about four more than I thought I would ever write. <laughs> I know you always say that. It's so, it's so funny. It just happens that way. I mean, you're like me. I just kind of follow the flow with everything, including what you said earlier, Gary, about just getting on and talking about things. Yeah, I emailed you a, a basic thing or whatever. We both know it's going to go where it's going to go. I wanted to read a couple quotes. I might. I might not, you know, or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just, I've just, I, I think people, one, one client asked me last week, um, gosh, do you, how, you know, how, how long do you think you'll be, you know, sharing the message or whatever? I said, you know what, that's a great, as until I don't, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I didn't even really, I, I was like, that's interesting, I guess. And just until I don't, I mean, I'm just practicing it all the time. I kind of, you know, it, it f fell into it. And I feel like I just kind of go with the flow with everything. You know? uh, I understand because, uh, you know, that's how I felt. And I never thought I'd write one book, but when I did, it took, uh, you know, like 10 years and I, I finished it and I thought that's it. And I'm, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> and, uh, Cause even though, <laughs> I mean, it, right. it's kind of like that old writers saying, I hate to write, but I love to have written. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Uh, I forgot who said that, but someone that we know, I forgot. But yeah. Me too. And uh, it's good. like, yeah, <laughs> it, it feels great when you're done. But uh, yeah. if, if you're not a natural writer, if you're not one of those people who are just, you sit down and it comes out, and I'm not one of those guys, uh, then, you know, it's like, uh, it, it's actually difficult for me to capture my experience, especially in my uh, narration uh, in the books, when I tried to say how I felt and what was going on in my life, it's difficult for me. So I thought that uh, the first book would probably be the last book. And then when I found that there was going to be another one, it kind of made sense for there to be a trilogy because, you know, two books, yeah. but three, that's, ah, that's cool. <laughs> now you got a trilogy. Boy, that's something in the world. Yeah, right? So I yeah, thought, yeah. okay, that'll be it. Trilogy, beautiful, it's all over. And I was more surprised than anybody that there was going to be a fourth book when I found out. So, uh, you know, I I was totally surprised the whole time whenever there was something else that happened that I didn't expect. Yeah, I know. And, I'm 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 behind the scenes with you, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know a lot of like, you know, what goes on and everything like that. You know, it's really interesting you said, Gary, about being a, like a natural writer and stuff. I was I sat down and I was starting to just do a little bit on book two, again, if I just get kind of inspired, I'll, I'll sit down and Bob Rosenthal, Dr. Bob Rosenthal, which we know who was the co-president of the oh, foundation yeah. for inner peace with Tam. I know there are people that will be watching this that, that like new people all the time and new to the course. So he uh -huh. was the co-president with Tam. He totally popped into my mind so strongly. I, and I go like this, I go, oh, Bob Rosenthal. And I looked over and his book popped. I looked right at his book on the shelf or whatever. And then I just got the, the, these things happen in the dream, whatever. It's not that big of a deal, but I just got this download and automatic writing, take this down. You know, that happens to wow. me sometimes. It's, it's a, it can be another subject, but I mean, a whole nother subject, but the automatic writing. Um, and so I just sat there and I was thinking of Bob and I was smiling. And then the image came to me, oh my God, last time I was at Barnes and Noble at the Grove, I was just looking over at the self-help because I kind of just look and see what, if your books are there or whatever. I look over, I looked right at Bob's book. So I said, okay, Bob is a symbol in my dream that keeps coming to me, <laughs> keeps encouraging me to teach. So I sat there and I wrote 11 pages of stuff. And then I stopped and I got up to get something to eat. I'm like, oh, can that happen all the time why doesn't that happen what why, why, why is this only you know a few you know things here or there or whatever but what made me just think about that was that you were talking about like being a natural writer and stuff like that and i feel like when i'm in the flow it feels really good but i don't have those moments all the time i kind of just 
do a little bit here and there. Everybody has their process. And then sometimes I'll just get a huge thing. So then I was motivated and that led me to, oh, let me look at this file. Okay, I was writing that on forgiveness. Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden I'm just kind of working on it. It's really weird. Yeah, yeah. That's Thanks, great. Well, Bob. Bob, yeah. <laughs> you know, Bob, uh, Bob was a great guy. I remember when we saw him speak at the conference in Boston. Yes, and remember I, that? Mm. It was just fantastic. And I told him after that was just about, you know, the best uh, presentation I've ever heard about so the course. Good. And he would. He was great. And I really feel like as a co-president of the foundation for a while, he brought kind of like a piece to the uh, course community that wasn't there before. Yes. Excellent In general, point. maybe it was, but there were certain groups that weren't exactly in alignment and he brought them together. You know, he got them so they're all talking to each other and being friends the way that they should be. And he uh, really gave a great service, I think. Uh, to the course community. Amazing. By the way, when you talk about channeling, uh, I should mention, because I said writing is hard for me, uh, the parts of my book are art and person speak, obviously, those are easy for me. Right. Because right. they're just given to me as a gift, you know, on a silver platter, the whole thing is handed to me. So when I talk about writing being hard for me, I'm talking about my narration. Your and things. narration, of course. But yeah. I don't like the conversations uh, with art and person. Right. That, um, they're the Holy Spirit. And I don't have to write those things. Yeah. And uh, that's good because if it was me, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> it's so nice to have this this help, the inspiration, uh, you know, coming in. It's so funny. I, yeah, I, I, I feel so grateful. It's hard to even put it into words just for everything in general, just being able to, which we'll talk about a little bit, um, kind of overlooking the ego. I just wanted to read, you know, one thing. I feel so grateful. Uh, this isn't the only thought system. We know that, uh, mm -hmm. that people can, it's not the best or worst. It is unique. It is different. And I always feel grateful because as we approach all this stuff in life, like Mark and I just got some hard news recently, which you kind of know about just from kind of private news, some hard news. And uh, I just noticed now, folks, let me preface this. Nothing wrong with being reactionary. It's normal to be shocked or angry. Or, but the mind automatically defaults after a while to remembering it's your dream. Now, everybody has a different kind of experience with that. And so we weren't as reactionary. We It didn't stop our lives. It didn't, do you know what I mean? And in the past, boy, this would have engendered a massive reaction so it's not that we're, we're not yeah. handling it and there's no denial going on it's just that you're coming from a different place uh the holy spirit resides in your mind reminding you it's your dream and simultaneously that is reflected through the love of that is reflected through and you're navigating problems with a calmer mind enabling to do what's best for everyone so that's one of many reasons why i just feel so grateful that the mind is awakening and for this teaching, because you can navigate everything here, um, reflecting the, the, the right mind and having an inner experience of that instead of the mind's experience of the ego, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've noticed that when something that appears to be big comes up for me, and it's been this way for over 20 years, it really started with 9-11, which yes. is the end of disappearance. Right. When something that appears to be uh, unusually difficult happens for me, I always automatically go right back to those words from the Course that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. They're all the same. And uh, as soon as I think that, I'm okay. You know, there's something about that saying and the truth of it that just uh, stops the ego in its tracks for me. Because that's when I remember, look, none of what I'm seeing is true. Now, uh, you mentioned the course not being the only thought system. Well, uh, it's really the kind of a thought system, it astounds me that anybody does A Course in Miracles or that anybody reads uh, our books because what they are saying is so different yeah. than the way that the world thinks. It, it just astounds me that anybody is into it. Uh, but right. 
Some people are because they're ready for it. Right. You know, I, it's not for everybody and not everybody is, is uh, ready for it. But uh, it is possible to recognize the truth of what the Course is saying. But the only way that you can do the Course is to not make what you're seeing real in your mind. You know, as the Course would say, uh, you know, you have made it real and so you cannot forgive it because uh, forgiveness does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. So uh, I've had people, you know, they'll uh, come on the internet and they'll tell me everything that's wrong with me. <laughs> you know, I know you and then you invariably at the end, they'll say, oh, and I forgive you. And I'll quote the course and I'll say, no, you have made it real. And so you cannot forgive it. You know, or if they were making it real, they wouldn't have had this laundry list of all the things that were wrong. Uh, you know, they would just uh, be at peace and they wouldn't have to hand out a lot of judgments. And uh, by the way, judgments, uh, you know, a lot of the words in the course go together. Like I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. I love that. Well, you know, a judgment is an attack thought. So if you're uh, making something real, that's an attack thought. You're taking what you've made, which is what, well, really what the ego made that you bought into. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're making it real with your belief. And you forget that you're doing that. So you get sucked in very easily. And what the Course is saying, no, none of it is true. And that's why it's forgivable. In fact, if this world was real, it would not be forgivable. Right. It, it would be terrible. <laughs> it would be unforgivable. <laughs> It's, it's like uh, Clint, e yeah. Clint Eastwood's movie there, Unforgiven. You know, yeah. it's like a uh, good great movie. movie. Great movie. Uh, best Western ever made, but so I don't good. It's like, uh, you know, you can't make it real and do A Course in Miracles. And uh, I don't say that lightly. It's true. Uh, you know, you can't pardon sins and make them real. So you've got to get to what you're seeing is not true. And that's why it's forgivable. Now, if you go that far, you can uh, replace it with the truth, which you also have to do, or else you'll end up uh, going around saying, oh, the world is an illusion. The world is an illusion. And all that that's going to do is make you feel empty and meaningless. And the world is meaningless, but that's not enough to say that. You've got to replace it with the truth. You've got to replace it in your mind with the truth. The truth is God. Uh, God is heaven. Heaven is everywhere. It's here. It's not some distant uh, place. Everything that you're seeing is designed to cover over heaven, to make it invisible to you, uh, to make so you don't see it. You know, it reminds me of that Matrix movie. Uh, you know, so, uh, the Matrix is there to pull the wool over your eyes. Yeah. Another to great prevent movie. You, <laughs> right. To prevent you from seeing the truth. And that's what the ego does. Uh, it, it's there to pull the wool over your eyes to prevent you from seeing what is really here. And what is really here has never gone away. It's been here the whole time. Like uh, Cindy's book, Heaven is Now. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not some uh, other time or place. It's here. And it's here right now. And it hasn't gone anywhere. And it's possible to become more aware of it by forgiving what is covering it over. What is blocking it? That's removing the blocks uh, to its presence by forgiving what the ego is showing you, which is everything that you see. But right. if you reinterpret it, now it has meaning because you're using it to forgive, replace it with the truth, and that's what gets you home. And uh, even though you don't have to do it, and even though it's not the only uh, thought system, and it's not the only way to get home to God, uh, it is a fast way. Mm -hmm. So if if the Course makes any claims of any kind, that's it. It says the chief aim of the miracle worker is to save time. And that's what I am very grateful to the Course for because I could have done something else. You know, there was a time I uh, considered going into a monastery because I don't like to talk. Right. I <laughs> really did very much. And Arden said to me very early that I was the kind of a guy who'd go into a monastery and not say a word for years. Right. And I could have easily done that. Right. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't because I realized how much uh, time forgiving 
this world uh, can save for you. It, you know, literally thousands of years right. and countless lifetimes. So um, I'm glad that I stuck with this uh, thought system, which on the surface uh, is not anywhere near anything that the world believes. But I actually came to believe that it was the truth. I think that uh, the Course is telling the truth. I, I know late in disappearance, Arden first said to me, look, Gary, you know what the Course is saying to you is true. You've been around the block a couple of times. You know, you've had all these right. uh, lifetimes, some of them spiritual. You know now that the Course is telling the truth. And if it's telling you the truth, then why not practice it? Why not live it? Because you know it's not going to do you any good if you don't practice it. Right. And if you're going to practice it, why not practice it all the time? You know, it's just, just logical. If you're going to save time, you might as well save yourself as much time as possible. Right. So uh, I'm... I'm very grateful that I was led to the course. And, uh, you know, I, I started doing it 30 years ago because that's when I was in person uh, first showed up to me. And uh, I think if it wasn't uh, for that, my life would have been pretty sad. And uh, instead, yeah. it's been say that. on yeah. balance. It, it's been happy. It, it's been a happier dream. It hasn't always been happy. Uh, right. If anybody's yeah. happy all the time, they're either enlightened or they're insane. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, this is duality. It's going to be, you got the, the good and the bad. Yeah. But, uh, yep. You and, uh, Cindy and Mark and your mom, it's like all of us, we've all been doing, uh, the course for a long time now. Many and, years. Uh, I, I think it would be great if, uh, people could hear some of our conversations like <laughs> at Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, I know. Because uh, we're either talking about the course or Cindy and Mark want to talk about aliens. Right. We have normal conversations like everyone else, <laughs> you know, with the aliens, the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the, the course, where we're going on vacation, just yeah. things we've done in the week. I mean, just normal. I mean, <laughs> kind of normal. But then, yes, if people could hear some of the conversations, you're right. They probably just wouldn't believe it <laughs> well, yeah because you know when, really when I lived in, uh, before i moved to california i lived in maine and i was married to karen i would have thanksgiving dinner with her uh parents and brothers and for six hours all they talked about was sports you know now i can talk about sports for an hour you can yeah and you're good at you it know, but six <laughs> hours no i want to hang myself you know, it's, you know it's like overkill yeah. Really? Oh, definitely overkill. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I wouldn't really hang myself, but I want to. Not really. I mean, you know what I mean? It's yep. like, no, yeah. just get me out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 people have different, I know it's hard to, to, to talk about something. Sometimes I feel like you're kind of, we're done, not you, we, everyone is like, you're done with a subject or something like that. And you just would naturally you know, move on to something, you know, but um, you mentioned the error or just a, a few moments ago, make, you know, making the error real and that you can't practice the course without st starting with at least intellectually understanding or believing the, the premise that the world is in our mind. There's no world really. It's just a projection. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to read and just get your thoughts about this because I, um, I like this from uh, the text, uh, chapter 13, um, as you look with open eyes upon your world, it must occur to you that you have withdrawn into insanity, the ego's madness, because my theme this year is addressing your BS, which I'll talk about in a minute, addressing your belief system. Okay. Yeah. So you have withdrawn into insanity. You see what is not there and you hear what makes no sound. Your manifestations of emotions are the opposite of what the emotions are. You communicate with no one and you are as isolated from reality as if you were alone in all the universe. In your madness, you overlook reality completely and you see only your own split mind everywhere you look. And I might add in here, the fact that we're perceiving at all, <laughs> we're seeing at all, shows you that we're in the dream. There's no, there's nothing to see. Um, God calls you 
<clears throat> God calls you and you do not hear for you are preoccupied with your own voice and the vision of Christ is not in your sight for you look upon yourself alone. Our split mind has led us to perceive a separated world with individual bodies and tons of special needs. I love that paragraph. Wow. I think that was his uh, Christmas message. That's yeah. It's the only insanity ever. Happy uh, holidays, Merry Christmas. No, no, that's that's wild. I forget. Uh, I've heard of, of course, but I forget exactly where in the course is that. Can you? Uh, yeah, tell text both? chapter. Yes, text chapter thirteen, section five, paragraph six, um, sentences one through seven. So, yeah, I think everybody. Text chapter gonna, thirteen, uh, the guiltless world. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just a, yeah. just a really good one. And I, I, I think everybody uh, is going to want to uh, look that up later too, because it, it's true. And it, it's kind of disconcerting to realize that you're doing that all the time as you go yeah. through this world and interact with this world. And uh, doing the course really is uh, an art because you do live your life. You know, you, you still have your life. The course doesn't try to take that away from you. It's about interpretation. So you're still going to see all these things. So important. But a quotation like that can help you to remember to reinterpret it with the Holy Spirit instead of the ego. Yeah. You know, okay, I so if I'm on my own and I forget about the course, then when I'm seeing and interacting with all these things, uh, I'm interacting with a thought system that is insane. And I'm insane for taking it seriously. Uh, you know, I understand today why Ken used to always say, Ken Wapner would, would say, don't take this seriously. Because yeah. as soon as you take it seriously, you're making it real. And as soon as you're making it real, uh, it's all over. The ego has won. You know, so uh, Arden and Persis said to me in the first book, they said, if you take this world seriously, it will take you. Yeah, and it does. And and that is so true. But now, if you're looking at all this insane stuff with the Holy Spirit, it, it's a totally different world. Because now you're using it to say, okay, uh, that's just my ego. It's not a big deal. It's not true. I can forgive it because it's not true. And I can replace it uh, in my mind with the truth. By the way, earlier when I said about uh, writing, art and person of the Holy Spirit, uh, I don't want to confuse people. They do appear to me. It's just that I've come to learn over many years, because I didn't know this for the first 10 or 15 years, that what they are so is the Holy Spirit appearing as art in person. Uh, the Holy Spirit has to take on uh, some kind of a form in order for us to hear it, or else we'd never be able to hear it, even if it's uh, an idea that comes into your mind. Uh, an idea has a form to it. You know, it, the Holy Spirit has to take on a form, as the Course says, his is the voice for God, and is therefore taken form. And it has to. But it also says this form is not his reality. So the Holy Spirit's reality is always spirit, just like our reality is always spirit. And maybe, you know, somewhere down the line, you start to realize that you are the Holy Spirit. That there's That's not really right. any difference between That's you right. and the, the Holy Spirit. That voice for God uh, in the uh, Song of Prayer, pamphlet, it says, the voice for God, now more certainly our own. You know, it's talking about uh, a higher realm of death in that particular section. But it's talking about how you become solely aware of the fact that that voice for God that you're listening to is your real voice. You know, and uh, it's the yep. voice that speaks for God because you speak for God because your reality is spirit and you're not a human being. You just thought you were. And that comes as kind of a relief uh, to me because I realized that, that at some point this body isn't gonna be here. And uh, you know, it's comforting to know that you will still exist you know, after this body ceases to be uh, and uh, the mind keeps going. Uh, a lot of people, they're somehow afraid of losing identity what they get is a better identity instead of the identity of being a body, which uh, ironically, you have to kind of like give that up ahead of time, you know, before you 
let go of the body because it totally changes the experience of death and your entire identity. So what you want to do is let go of that bodily identification and get used to the idea that you're not a body while you still appear to be in one, which is kind of ironic, yet that's the place where you want to learn that. Yeah. While you appear to be in a body, you want to learn that you're not a body and that you're not in a body and that you never have been and that your mind will keep right on going and the direction of that mind is being determined by you right now according to which uh, thought system you invest your belief in. So uh, I the I think the trick is, you know, to choose all the time to invest your belief in reality, which is why the Course says be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. I grant you, uh, that's a pretty tall order. Yes, we have steps, you know, we don't yeah. go from A to Z, even though we know it in our mind, but we practice, we have to use the symbols here, right? We're so fearful that we have to, we make up symbols and we use them to help us. But to your point, we, when we get up to the top of the ladder, we realize there's no separate, we are the Holy Spirit. And not only that, but there's no Holy Spirit. There's just oneness. And, you know, these are steps I get asked about, you know, steps all the time. And um, okay. you brought up something, losing your identity. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have to write it down because it was a really good point. And I just want to share with people, it's going to be your choice that you're identifying more with spirit. Like to your point, Gary, you know, people are always saying, oh, I, and, and, this is what happens, you know, it's you feel sometimes like you're losing yourself or whatever, or something's going to be yanked away from you while the ego has you in its grips. Just remember, it's going to fight for existence. But even past that, nothing will be ripped away from you guys, really, it, it will be your choice, you'll feel better. And it'll be the choice as you kind of go up the ladder that you're identifying with spirit more and you're feeling kind of the effects of that even though we're going through duality of the ego has to sneak in the back door and uh keep you know inducing fear and everything like that but if you're gentle with yourself and you're kind to yourself and you're really a reflection of the right mind, whatever that is for you. What, what could be wrong with becoming more loving and forgiving and everything? And then when the ego comes in and we seem to vacillate and slip back into things, uh, don't, don't judge yourself for that. Just remember, boy, this is, wow, I'm watching this now and now I'm dipping into sadness or now I'm back in elation or now I'm so grateful for my life. Oh, now I'm just judging that person. Why are they doing but it's like the mind's madness. Just it can just go back and forth. You don't have to indulge it. And when you do indulge it, you don't judge it because it's what bodies do. And you forgive it when you're ready. And nothing will be yanked away from you, even if it feels that way sometimes. It'll just merely be your choice as you climb up the ladder. It won't be like anything is taken away because you realize what you're really gaining. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> that was beautifully put mm. yeah, absolutely and uh you know doing the course at first it's uh you know counterintuitive you know because it's the opposite of everything that we've known yes. forever it seems yeah and uh in this lifetime you know we believe that we were born and made by other bodies you know, and, and we bought the whole story it, and the funny thing is it's just a story <laughs> it's not, not even true oh, you know there's a great movie uh, it's called Lone Star and uh, oh, I didn't Chris see Cooper, that you know, uh, Chris Cooper is in it and uh, oh. it's Elizabeth Pena and she plays a history teacher it, it's a great story oh John write that Sales. down okay. yeah, John Seals makes great movies and uh, this one's right. called Lone Star okay. and, and it's just a, a great story Academy Award nominated screenplay and uh but at the end of the movie, I I don't think I'm spoiler alert, but I don't think it would yeah. spoil it anyway. Mute uh, your mute and, your audio. Go ahead. Yeah, you she and Chris, she and Chris Cooper, uh, they're looking at a movie screen and it's blank. They're in a an old drive-in. Nobody's there but them to look at uh at the screen. She's a history teacher. 
right? And, you know, the history is like sacred to history teachers. And, and, uh, and she's talking about things and she realizes some things and she says, you know, all that stuff, because they're in Texas. And she says, you know, all that stuff about the Alamo and everything, uh, just stories. And then she says, F the Alamo. She, you know, she uses the F word. And uh, because she's come to the realization that none of it's true. That, you know, even most of our history is is stories made up, you know, uh, you know, it gets handed down. <laughs> whoever won the war. Yeah. Yeah. Our difference is that history is made up by whoever wins the war. Right. But, uh, you know, I mean, you and I know because I've been to both Japan and China and you're going to get two different stories about what happened in World War II if you go to Japan and if you go to China. And there's no love loss between those people. They, they still hate each other. Uh, not all of them, of course, you know, the new generation, they don't care. But uh, there's still a lot of hatred. And uh, you talk about making it real. And uh, I noticed that when I go to both Japan and China, our audiences are much younger than uh, in other you places. Said that. That's right. You, you of, mentioned that. A lot of people in their 20s. And... Uh, they're tired of the old school. They're tired of, uh, you know, their parents' way of doing things, way of being. And they see A Course in Miracles. And I think one of the reasons they like it is because it's just so damn radical. You know, <laughs> right. it is, it's like, you know, to them, it's Crying like for rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to them, it's like overthrowing the world. You know, it's overthrowing society and, and everything. Yeah. Sure. And uh, they like that. So, and I like the fact that we have young audiences. Uh, when That's we go so there. interesting. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, the world itself is concerned, uh, you'll see in the next book, Art and Persia are not very optimistic about what's going to be happening in, in the world the next few decades. Yes. Uh, but, what can you tell us? Like... Well, I, I can't give you details. Just to say that one of the things that they're emphasizing in the book, and they always have, but especially in this one, is that we have to be prepared to forgive no matter what. Because this is going to be what appears to be some pretty big stuff uh, going down. Yeah. And uh, it's not going to be pleasant. And, uh, you know, climate change is one of them. And uh, it's uh, we're not solving the problem. In fact, one of their positions is, well, not that they need a position, but it's that one of the things they're saying is that we have set up the world so that we can't solve our problems that uh whether it's our government or uh you know the the back and forth in society uh when it comes to separation because it's all based on separation which is one of the things yep. that they emphasize uh we've actually set up a lot of problems so that they're impossible to solve uh at one point of course miracle says you know to this impossible situation to which the ego always leads you yeah, it's like we have set up a whole series of impossible situations that we literally cannot fix. And we're not going to be able to fix them. And we're not, most people in the world won't understand why they can't be fixed. And the reason they can't be fixed is because they don't know what the real problem is. And the real problem is separation. Right. Because it's all based on separation. Right. The very idea of duality itself is uh, based on separation. And then people can't understand, well, why can't we uh, fix this? Why can't we all get along, as, as Rodney King would say? Yeah. And uh, the answer is because it's all based on separation, including the way that people think and that polarity and duality that you have. You have to solve the problem where it is, which is why, uh, you know, you have that famous quote from Persa, the people of the world will never live in peace until the people of the world have inner peace. Right. And uh, that's what they're teaching in this book, that there is a way, but the world is not pursuing that way right now. Yeah. But they do teach how to do it. And uh, anybody who's ready for it can do it. And they don't have to wait for the rest of the world to wake up. You know, that could take at least a million years. But you don't have to wait a million years. No. You, know, you can do it in this lifetime. It is uh, possible. Because the miracle can substitute for learning that may have taken thousands of years. Right. So that's funny. You're saying they're not very, you know, optimistic. Um, but it's interesting how, like you were just saying too, but the, the, the world is in our mind, 
And that's why we have to have inner peace. We have to perceive correctly. <laughs> yes, know? and even though they're not optimistic about uh, what's going to appear to happen in the story, uh, they are optimistic that bit by bit, just like it's supposed to happen with the Holy Spirit, uh, we are waking up gradually, which is the only way that we could wake up, because what we're awakening to is not like being human. <laughs> it's not like being a human being. Uh, it's Spirit is a totally different life form, yeah. which has no form, and we have to be prepared. That's why it has to go slow and appear to go slow. And of course, people don't like that because they want instant gratification. Uh, but it can't happen when you're totally changing everything. Uh, and the course itself says you might be surprised how different reality is mm -hmm. from what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So it has to be an acquired taste. It has to be a gradual thing. Yeah. Right, exactly. And when you keep in mind, everyone, you know, your the world's in your mind and, and how do we how do we save the world? Well, we we forgive it. You're not saving it externally. <laughs> You're waking up from your dream that there is a world. So That's and right. Then, and you're hence your book, Gary, the disappearance of the universe. It just disappears because it it wasn't there. So you save the world by forgiving it, by healing your own mind, because there's only one. That's right. We have to do uh, you know, our job. You know, the Course says the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. You forgive. That's how you save the world. You forgive uh, what's in your mind. And, you know, maybe someday you'll get that the entire universe is in your mind and that there's only one mind and you're it and there isn't anybody else. But that's, you know, uh, for later in the story, it it's like yeah. uh, at first you start by just forgiving what's right in front of your face and uh, by doing the course by realizing that it's not true and by what is true is spirit and that that's the truth about uh, everybody. And uh Art and person are optimistic about people doing that. You know, there are more and more people doing that. You're not going to see it on the nightly news. You right. know, it's not going to be a big story. <laughs> uh, people will make fun of things like A Course in Miracles. You know, it's like, uh, like Marianne Williamson ran for president. What did people do? They made fun of her because she believed in things like love and reincarnation. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, uh, that's the way that the world will treat new ideas and always have by the way and uh so that's the way that they're gonna look at it but they don't understand that there are people who get it and uh there are people who are awakening you know it might be one in five thousand that's plenty it's like jesus said in the gospel of thomas you know i shall choose you uh, one from a thousand and two from a ten thousand so do the math let me think that's okay one every five thousand and uh <laughs> But that also means that you got 4,999 that aren't doing it. And that's okay. You know, yeah. uh, they can watch the Super Bowl their way. I'll watch the Super Bowl my way. Right. You know, and, uh, right. Same Super Bowl. Yeah. No change. No change. But you know, enlightenment, the Course says, is but a recognition. It's not a change at all. I love so that. it still looks like the same world. You know, but uh, you're not looking at it the same way. You're forgiving it as you go along. Right. I still enjoyed the Super Bowl, by the way, even though, uh, you know, oh, that was, it's not true. I, it's not true, but it's fun to watch. I was praying, Gary, it would be a close game. It's so much more fun when it's, when it's close. That <laughs> was a good, it was a good, I haven't fully watched the Super Bowl, like sat down and watched it for years. Sometimes we'll have it on the background. I make my famous chili and we're doing whatever. Um, but I was glued. It was so funny. Mark sat down. Mom was here. We're all like watching. I'm like, oh, this is like a really good game. I really enjoyed it. And you're right. Even though we know it doesn't stop you from enjoying everything, you know, and, and uh, that's right. normal, which yeah. Ken talks about a lot, which you talk a lot, a lot when you're um, quoting Ken and talking uh, in all of your many, many, many teachings that you've done. It's just important to be normal here. Um, and, you know, I, in my own experience, I'd love to share with people, I really can't stress that enough, because if you're not 
being normal because you're trying to be spiritual or you're like, oh, it's an illusion. I can't, it's missing the entire point of the course because you're just making it real on the other side by denying how you feel, not, not using it as a classroom, you know, not taking medicine, not uh, trying to manifest things. Well, if you may as well not drink water then or eat food. It's all magic. It's just stuff that we do in the dream. So I've counseled people on this for being a therapist for 17 years. It's one of the most asked questions when I do have, I do have a lot of, of, of uh, course people that come to me. Um, and it's just important to use it as a classroom, but not try to not be normal and use your feelings or your, your ailments or your worries or concerns we give them to Jesus and he can help us retranslate it when we're ready it's not denial so I think that's really hard thing for people it's not this is not about denial you're just making it real on the other side by not being normal if you if you were just being normal you wouldn't be making it real you're like oh in the dream now I have this in the dream now well, it's time to go to the doctor for this it's time to oh that person makes me mad interesting but you're yeah. In yeah. your mind, though, simultaneously, you know the person's in your mind, but you're like, oh, I can't be mad. I mean, you can't, that's making it real on the other side. It's hard. Yeah. It's tough for people, you know. Yeah. Well, you will get mad. You. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what needs to be forgiven. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. I mean, yeah. you know, if everyone was perfect, we wouldn't need A Course in Miracles. Uh, yeah. We'd all be home already. We'd be home already. Yeah, I wonder. We, we are. We are home already, but that's, you know, part of realizing that you're not here. I love yeah. that line in the course. You know, how else can you find joy in a joyless place except by realizing you are not there? Yeah. And right. uh, that's something that we'll all realize and actually experience eventually where we really are. And that comes at first in lovely flashes, as the course calls it. But eventually it becomes your permanent reality. Yeah. And uh, I think that doing it also makes your life uh, more interesting. You know, it's like uh, it, yeah, it actually, actually. actually make things uh, fascinating and it's fun uh, to know the truth. Uh, if you understand what A Course in Miracles is saying, what, like The Course says, what if you, you know, realize this world is a hallucination? Mm -hmm. What if you really understood you made it up? meaning everything, including water and oxygen and stars and galaxies and and uh, everything, time, numbers, uh, everything, all of it. Uh, what if you realize that all these people are completely untrue, that they're not real people, that you made them up? You know, I, I usually try not to say that to later in the workshop because... I know, you always say that so funny. You don't start out with that, maybe. It just depends <laughs> Well, sometimes I forget and I'm saying it too early and people are looking at me like, what? Yeah, he's what, insane. What saying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're so yeah. funny. You've been so good with people. I I see, you know, you behind the scenes and stuff like that. It's a lot. You you have, you know, a lot of projection coming at anybody that's, that's we're just in a world where, you know, everybody's projecting and stuff like that, you know, but you take so much time with people, with signing things with, you know, um, I know you're, you're staying in your right mind because I know sometimes you would be like, you're not, you're not attached to this, but there's other things you could be doing, but you're, you're really knowing that it's helpful if you do certain things. And I know that because I, I see you doing them, you know? And, yeah, and uh, it turned out it was good for me because uh, I'll tell you in person, uh, the people are always great. You know, I've never had any problems with people in person. Uh, on the internet, uh, you know, the internet is yeah. not always the friendliest place the in the world. world. Never has been. And when I, yeah, it's duality. Uh, when I first had the book come out, it was not a pleasant experience. It was when I started getting out there and being with people that it was fun because yeah. they're the real course yeah. miracle students what a difference right yeah. um in the last 10 minutes i wish i would have put this this for longer but you know it's hard to i didn't want to be cut off you know um but 
my theme is addressing your BS, which is addressing your belief system, which who are you believing, the ego or the Holy Spirit? Reflections of that are always addressing your your BS here, what we would call our forgiveness opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And we all have a lot of them. Um, and at all the time, we have every opportunity to forgive. It's all around us. I just wanted to read uh, one more thing and then get your comment. Um, this is from the text, chapter 19, section 4D, paragraph 12, 1 through 8. The brother who stands beside you still seems to be a stranger. You do not know him, and your interpretation of him is very fearful, and you attack him still to keep what seems to be yourself unharmed. What seems to be yourself unharmed. Yet in his hands is your salvation. You see his madness, which you hate because you share it. We all share the same thought system, guys. We all share the ego. We all share the Holy Spirit, no matter what the forms are. And all the pity and forgiveness that would heal it gives way to fear. Brother, you need forgiveness of your brother, for you will share in madness or in heaven together. And you and he will raise your eyes in faith together or not at all. Love that. Wow. Yeah. You know, uh, when you talk about your uh, BS, uh, you know, it's really where you invest your belief, uh, where you will find the things that are going to affect you. If you're investing your belief in something, you're giving it the power to hurt you, uh, whatever it is in this world. But if you take that belief back and invest it where it belongs, which is, you know, with reality, which is with God, and his kingdom, then you can't go wrong. You know, so uh, like the Course says, uh, the poor are merely those who have invested wrongly and they are poor indeed. Uh, you know, so now I'm not saying that you can't enjoy the illusion, just like uh, I go to the movies, I enjoy it. I know it's an illusion, but I still enjoy it. I know that my life is an illusion, but I can still enjoy it. I can, I can still have a good time. And, uh, you know, it's just that I'm not investing my belief there anymore i know it's just a temporary phenomena i know that uh it'll be over soon so how can you invest your belief in something that you know is so temporary when you have the opportunity once you've been taught what the truth is you have the opportunity to invest your belief in something that is uh permanent uh it's like that one of the great last quotes they used in disappearance was you know for constancy arises in the sight of those salvation has released from the cost of keeping guilt because they chose to let it go instead. Beautiful. You know, this goes along perfectly with uh, one of the best lines uh, in the Course says, holding no one prisoner to guilt, we can be free. Oh, yeah. You know, and if you want a, a formula, that that's a pretty good one. You know, if you hold no one prisoner to guilt, you're actually freeing yourself. And so, uh, boy, uh, yeah, there are different ways of putting it, but there are, you know, formulas in the course that basically say the same thing that can get you there. You know, like Jesus was the name of a man uh, who saw the face of Christ in all his brothers and remembered God. Well, that's how you do it. You know, he, he saw the face of Christ, not in some of them remember, he saw the face of Christ in all his brothers. Right. And remembered God because now, you can say, okay, if I'm going to do that, that means I have to overlook uh, the madness. You know, somebody's acting insane. Uh, I'm walking down the street and somebody on the street starts yelling at me for no reason. Uh, I can overlook that. Right. You know, I'm not saying I won't protect myself if he comes walking toward me. You know, maybe I'll protect myself by running away. I don't know. <laughs> but well, however I do, I do that. Do the normal thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However I do that. Uh, I can overlook the insanity. I can overlook the madness because I know who that person really is. And who that person really is, is not that body. You know, the way I think nowadays, that's the last thing that I think that person is. I know that they're not a body and that right. what they really are is this divine creation of God, uh, perfect, exactly the same as God. 
Uh, and by thinking of them that way, that's how you remember God, the same way that Jesus did. You see the face of Christ, which is an attitude, a way of being, a way of thinking. Uh, spiritual sight is the way that you think. Yes. And uh, by knowing who they really are, that's seeing the face of Christ in all your brothers. But you can't make any exceptions, it. unfortunately. Right, right, right. Even right. Uh, Vladimir Putin, who I don't like, uh, I have to overlook his insanity, even though I think he's a mass murderer. And the old Gary would have been very happy to see him hung. Uh, but not today, because uh, I know that I made him right. up, and I made him up for a reason. Right. And the reason was so that my insanity, which I think I'm insane for throwing away heaven uh, and for this, uh, his insanity is my insanity that I wanted to be in him instead of me. So now he could be the guilty party. And the truth is that the only way out for me is to uh, forgive that insanity, which is actually my own. But I also know that if I do that and I overlook the insanity and think of him as he really is, mm -hmm. that is how I will come to experience myself. Beautiful. That's a great place because we only have two minutes. And I just, first of all, wanted to tell you I love you and thank you. It's so fun to do these discussions. And the second thing is, did you see that thing? I'm not sure uh, Mark sent it. He was in D.C. on a trip and there was a menu and it had just all these random questions that are so interesting. I don't know if Sin shared that. With, I, it was just recently. I don't know if you saw it. Not but yet. I, Okay, not yet. You'll see it. And I want to just ask you a couple quick questions before we sign off. Okay. <laughs> just off sure. the cuff. Okay. Um, what food represents your personality? Oh, uh, a submarine sandwich. Nice. <clears throat> what is the most expensive meal you ever had? Ooh. It's this place in Brentwood. And uh, it was. Uh, I remember in, when you guys went to that place. Yeah. It's where Baltiers. the old Cheesecake Factory was. Yeah, it's called right. Baltiers. And uh, they had the most expensive form of Japanese wagyu that uh, I've ever had. That's the most expensive. That Wagyu beef, that was so good. Yeah. Okay. What was your favorite candy when you were a child? Oh, Juji Fruits. Yay. Sometimes you still have those in the drawer, don't you? I do the candy drawer you have in your house. I, uh, by the um, way, uh, by the way, spaghetti is a tie with submarine sandwiches. Submarine sandwich and your spaghetti bolognese. Yes, absolutely. You love it. You have to go to this new place. Mark and I will take you and Sin on La Brea. They have great bolognese. Yeah, oh my God. great, that so good. Great. Um, <clears throat> uh, what is the weirdest fact that you know? Weirdest fact. That I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that cockroaches have been here for billions of years. Oh my God. When I found that out, that's a great one. That was so wild, so weird. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, and I was going to be jealous of them. Then somebody said to me, Yeah, but they don't know it. Don't yes. Know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> that's right. Anything you want to uh, announce or say really quick? I think there's probably like 30 seconds. Uh, no, I was just wondering, uh, what do the answers mean? Uh, is there an, an interpretation to that? No, it's just, there's no right or wrong answers. This thing is so cool. And there's tons of just random questions. You know, if you had a robot that could do anything, what would you ask it to do? There's no right or wrong answers. It's just something to make you think. And Mark sent it over because as he was waiting for his meal, he's like, oh my God, this is this is wild. You know, what three things are you most grateful for? Um, if you could rename planet Earth, what would it be? Um, do you have vivid well, dreams? I mean, there's just so many. So anyway, well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll give you one last thought because Art and Persa have given another name to uh, to Earth, uh, which they call Psycho Planet. Yeah, right. And you'll <laughs> see that uh, they they use that word first in uh, disappearance, mm -hmm. or actually, I think I was the first one to use it, but then they kind of like took it up, they and took so it now up. they call it uh, in this next book they refer to Earth as Psycho Planet, uh, not that you have to remain psycho. Uh, in fact, the Course Miracle says you are no longer holy insane, which right. 
I think it's quite a compliment. And uh, so, right. but that's what they call it. Compliment. I love it. Well, it was so fun to talk with you in this uh, forum and um, I love you so much. And thanks for all the inspiration and the, the goodness over, over the years. And um, everyone watching, love to you and keep practicing. Be kind to yourself, be gentle and uh, everything all will be well. Okay. Okay. Love you too, Jackie. Thank you. Love you too. Bye, everyone. Stop this.